Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome to New Life in the Bronx Church. We're so happy that you can be with us on this hot Sunday morning. Uh, make sure you stay hydrated, but most of all, make sure you put your focus on the Lord. Drink plenty of fluid and come and praise with us this morning as we worship and give God all the honor, glory, and praise. There's something else I'd like you to try. I'd like you to call somebody up. And, and watch the sermon together, watch the service rather together. And then use your chat. You can go on any of the platforms and chat back and forth with one another about what God is saying to you during this service. It's a way of continuing our fellowship and continuing to maintain uh, our, our unity in the spirit as we wait, hopefully for August, when we begin live service. Amen? Amen. We want to thank God for that. Uh, I'd like to say a very, very happy birthday to Shamar. Shamar, I know your birthday was last week, but a happy belated birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. And also to Candace. Sister Candace, I know you've been working hard. You are one of our heroes. You're one of our uh, frontline workers in this battle against COVID. And we are so blessed that God has allowed you to see another year. So God bless you and have a happy, happy birthday in Jesus' name. So once again, come and join us as we celebrate the goodness of God always by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we want to enter into a time of prayer right now. So if you're able... Join me in a word of prayer to our Father in heaven. Father, mighty God, matchless and holy one, we've come to praise you and to glorify your name. Lord, we praise you for all the promises that you, O oh God, extend to us daily. And so we can say very, very gladly, I will bless the Lord at all times. Your praise, almighty God, will continually be in my mouth, on my lips, not complaints, but praise. Magnify the Lord with me. Come, everyone, let us worship God together. Father, we sought you, the Lord, with all our heart, and you continually deliver us from all our troubles. And for that, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Today, we're so thankful that your angels encamp themselves about us because we fear you, O oh God. We have a reverent and awesome fear of you. And so we can come to you and we can taste and see that you are good. And you said, blessed is a person who takes refuge in you. Refuge, that place where we come to hide when this life gets crazy, almighty God. Thank you that you've provided a place of shelter for us where we can hide from the craziness, from the storms. And almighty God, we praise you. Your word says that a righteous man may have many troubles, but Lord, you deliver us from them all all lord god not even one of our bones will be broken because anyone who makes you their refuge almighty god you sustain them father we thank you today that during this time when people unfortunately are experiencing lack you tell us we've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we praise you today again, Lord, that you are close to the brokenhearted, and we know that there are many brokenhearted people out there today. Lord, we lift up the multitude of families that are hurting very much. They're broken, Lord, but thank you that you are close to them. Father, we praise you that you're close to those who are crushed in spirit. Almighty God in heaven, today as we come to worship you, Father, we want to praise you for everything that you are to us. You're our shield. You're our strong tower. You're our help in time of trouble. Jesus, you're the bomb of Gilead, so you heal our broken bodies, our, our minds when they just feel, you know, um, like we're a little unstable because of the craziness. Thank you, almighty God, that like one person says, you are all things to all people. Thank you, God. Everything we need, 
we find in you. And so, Lord God, today we're going to fix our eyes on you. Because as we fix our eyes on you, like the song says, the things of the world, the problems of the world grow strangely dim because your bright light just takes them all away. We can no longer see it. And so, Father, hallelujah, thank you. Thank you for a time when we can just dedicate our praise to you, lay our cares before you, and leave transformed. Thank you that when we sit in your presence, we always leave better than when we came in. And for that, we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everyone can say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Now we're going to continue to worship the Lord. Amen. Hey, praise the Lord. I hope everyone is here to worship God, our good father. He's so good. So we want to sing about it right now. Hallelujah. If you don't know him, hopefully by the end of this worship time, you will. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're You 
are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, love so undeniable. Hallelujah. Go 
Step out of the shadows. Step out of the grave. Come on, step out of it, y'all. Break into the wild and don't be afraid. Come on, run, 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 run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been. Spirit 
with Jesus, with Jesus in your heart, you are no longer a slave to sin, but you're free. And it's not freedom to go crazy and lose your mind, but it's a freedom to follow the way maker the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the lion of Judah, light in the darkness. Come on, start telling him all the things that he is to you. Hallelujah. Amen. You never stop working. 
you never stop, you never stop we make working. A, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You're the we make a I'd like to thank our uh, praise team for their wonderful ministry in song and praise. Amen. Today's sermon comes from Matthew, the 13th chapter, the 24th to the 43rd verse, where Jesus provides a description of what the kingdom of heaven will be like during the period when he is no longer walking with the church here on earth. You know, in Matthew, by this point, by chapter 13 of Matthew, uh, the Jews have already rejected Jesus as king. And Christ is aware that there will be a period of time when he will be with the Father in heaven before his promised return to rule the church here on earth. Please read with me as I start at Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Amen. And the great word of God reads as such. Jesus told another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did, it, did, did this, he replied. The servant asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weed and tie them up, tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a man took and mixed about 60 pounds of flour until it worked through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. 
He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Hallelujah for his word. Let us pray. Most eternal father who art in heaven, we come to you now in the name of Jesus Christ, and we ask, Father, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would speak to us and give us understanding. Help us to understand how we might live during this age of the church. We ask you now, O oh Lord, to comfort our minds so that we may hear you and obey you in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, in today's scripture, uh, in the parable spoken by Jesus, we learn that the enemy of God has continued to infiltrate the church and the world with weeds in an attempt to weaken and eventually destroy the body of Christ, a.k.a the church, the group of believers who serve the Lord. That's his business. That's what he always does. We should never, ever, ever be surprised that the enemy of God, a.k.a. Satan, is always attempting to destroy the work of God, the body of Christ. He tried it once Christ was filled with the Holy Spirit and was taken into the to desert, he tries it today with the church of God by, by causing so much division, trying to destroy the work by infiltrating, infiltrating the world and infiltrating the church with weeds. So in this first parable we read, uh, the, the first parable we read rather, we learn that Jesus is the sower of good seeds. You know, as the Bible says, no one comes to the Father except by the Son. So Jesus is the one who sows good seed. The good seed represents the believers in Christ. Amen. It is our faith in Jesus that saves us. Praise God. It's our faith that saves us from the power of sin. And we can do nothing, nothing apart from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise God. The field is the world. Not only the church, but the whole world. And the church is included in the world. Unfortunately, the church is continually impacted by the things of the world instead of the other way around. God intended that the church would lead the world. But unfortunately, because of uh, sin and because of this infiltration by the enemy of God, uh, the world at times leads the church. Then we find that the weeds are the sons of the evil one, the enemy of God. These are the ones that have rejected the way of God. People who reject God's way do what? Follow their own. These are the ones who want to be independent. 
independent thinkers, independent doers. They do not want to submit. They do not want to surrender their lives to God. And then the enemy is the devil, Satan himself, who sneaks. Notice, notice, the enemy didn't come in the daytime. The enemy didn't come boldly, but he snuck in at night. Hallelujah. Remember a couple of, uh, maybe a couple of months ago when he said, watch, watch. That means that we are always to be ready. We should always be watching because he comes like a thief in the night coming to steal God's joy from us. So we have to be ready. What does that mean for us saints that we constantly need to be uh, uh, watching, constantly need to be watching, keeping our eyes on the word of God? If you keep your eye on the word of God, guess what? Saints, you will not have to fear the enemy. If you keep your eye on the word of God and do the will of God and walk by the power of the Holy Spirit, guess what? You will not have to fear what the enemy has because he can do nothing to you because you will not surrender your Holy Spirit to him. Amen. Amen. And then the harvesters. The harvesters are God's angels. They will do the work of who? They will do the work of Jesus as they are instructed. Amen. I love that part right there. Uh, we, we see here that Jesus, in, at the appropriate time, will come to judge the wheat from the tares or the wheat from the weeds. It is Jesus who does the judging, not us. What do we do? We keep our eyes on the Lord and seek him first. Praise God. Praise God. So once again, in these parables, Jesus is describing what the kingdom of heaven will look like in his absence. You know, and some may say, well, Pastor Rob, Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But Jesus did say, when I go, I will send you another. So he has not broken his promise to never leave us nor forsake us because he has given us his spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Praise God. So we're looking at what the kingdom of heaven will look like. Right? And the, the body of Christ is in the kingdom of heaven. What's it going to look like uh, while he is with his father who art in heaven? And so today I want to focus on two points. I'm going to repeat these two points. So it may seem like more than two points, but it's only two points. <laughs> uh, the first point I want to look at, the first thing I want to look at is the characteristic of the kingdom of heaven as described in these parables. Now, as we look at these parables, we see that the kingdom of heaven is a duplicity. All right, run, talking to your phones. What's duplicity? <laughs> That's what I had to do. It means a doubleness consisting of, and, and it's, it's a doubleness, but in this parable, it's a doubleness consisting of both good and evil. Thus, we have the wheat and the weeds, all right? So this, uh, both good and evil living side by side, it describes what is called a mixed kingdom, amen? A mixed kingdom in that there is both good and evil, the weeds and the wheat are together in the field. The field is the world, and they are together. Amen? So just like in the world today, it is hard to tell. Uh, uh, and this is not, not, not a good thing, but it is hard to tell in the world today. Uh, it is hard to tell apart the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the world. I think maybe you're getting a sense of what, what direction I'm going in today. Uh, not only are the weeds and the wheat side by side in the field, but they are also indistinguishable. It is very difficult to tell them apart. The weeds look so similar to the wheat that they cannot be told apart. And, and, and the sad thing about today is that in today's world, sometimes, many times, Christians cannot be told, uh, can, are indistinguishable, rather, from those unbelievers, 
those who are in the world. And that is something that I believe Jesus is, is saying, is going, he said it back then, was going to happen. He said it was going to happen that, that the wheat would grow right up alongside with the weeds and they would become indistinguishable. You know, in, in studying for today's sermon, I learned that the weed they are talking about in the gospel today referred to here is called the Darnell weed or Darnell grass. You can look it up. I did, and, I, and it's very, very interesting. The Darnell wheat, weed is a rye grass. It's a rye grass weed that usually grows in the same production zones as wheat and is considered a weed. The similarity between uh, wheat and the Darnell are so great that in some regions, Darnell, the Darnell grass or the rye grass called Darnell, is referred to as false wheat. Are you starting to get an understanding of what's going on, what Jesus was telling us in this parable? So Darnell is called false wheat. It bears a close resemblance to wheat, and it looks so similar to wheat until the ear or the fruit of the wheat appears. Amen. Amen. So, so, so even in today's world, the believer may look so similar, or the unbeliever may look so similar to the believer until fruit is bared. Until the fruit of the Holy Spirit rises up and shows itself in the life of the believer. So how, how does the farmer distinguish between Darnell and the wheat? The weed or the wheat, he waits to, uh, to reap the fruit from the wheat. How today are people to tell the difference between a believer and an unbeliever? It's not because you go to church. And if some of you are coming to church because you think that's going to make you a believer, God is saying now that's not the true believer. Not the believer who goes to church, not the believer who dresses a certain way, speaks a certain way, uh, holds their Bible a certain way. But the believer, the true believer in Christ is the one who surrenders their life to God and walks in the power of the Holy Spirit so that the fruit of the Spirit bears witness in their life. Amen. Are you getting this understanding? Are you starting to understand where it is God is taking us today? So it bears a close resemblance to wheat until the air or the fruit on the wheat appears. As I continued to read on Darnell, about Darnell, I learned that its root, and this was very interesting, its root intertwines with the root of the wheat. And so they run together. And that's why in the parable, Jesus said, when, when, the, when the servants asked, do you want us to go out? Do you want us to run out and, and separate the wheat from the weeds? Jesus said, no. No. In the parable, it said, no, don't do that. Because if you separate the weed right now, you are going to what? destroy the wheat. Amen. You may have been wondering, why is God sitting around while there's those who do evil? Why is God sitting around while there's those who are oppressed? He does it because if he was to attempt to eradicate the weeds that are among us, that grow up among us and sometimes lay in the same bed at us, as us, we would be destroyed. It would be us who are destroyed along with the weed because this weed intertwines its roots. That's what's happening under the ground. It intertwines with the wheat. Amen. So in the Bible, Darnell is, a, is another word uh, for tares, right? The wheat and the tares. I also learned that Darnell cannot live. Oh, this is very interesting. Darnell cannot live without human 
help. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus is speaking by the power of his Holy Spirit today. The, the weed could not live. The weed, Darnell, could not live without human help. I got a, a, a something for you today. Guess what? Sin could not live without human help. The evil spirits cannot reign in your life without human help. The evil spirits cannot reign in your home without human help. When we talk about surrendering our lives to the Lord God, when we talk about giving our lives to Jesus and surrendering and allow God to have his way in our life, what we are saying is, although God cannot remove the wheat among us, he will take care of us. We, our human flesh will not give in to the darnell, into the weed that is around us. We will be able to stand according to the spirit, the power of the spirit of God. Amen. Come on and understand this with me today. Hallelujah. Another interesting fact about darnell is, is if eaten in a big enough dose, darnell can kill a person. Ooh. And, and farmers would have taken, so farmers take, uh, uh, back then, took very special care to separate the Darnell out of the true harvest. Amen? He, they, they took care to separate those two and use only the ones that produce fruit to take back to the barn. And the others were bundled and uh, taken and burned. Amen? So, you know, if, if you eat enough sin, it will destroy you. And, little, and, it's, and, and, and this was a, a, a fact that, that showed up in, in my research that Darnell, if taken in a little amount, can make you high. It can make you high. You know, sin taken in a little, little amount make you feel good. Huh? Like, oh, everything's going to be all right. I got a little sin. But, but what it doesn't say is that as you take a little, you begin to want more and more and more. Because how many of you know the flesh is never going to be pleased? Never going to be pleased. And so it takes more and more until it kills you. See, we're talking today about giving our lives to the Lord so that we would grow and he would protect us from the weeds that are around us. So as I stated, uh, Darnell is a mimic weed. That's what they call it, a mimic weed. Neither entirely tame or quite wild. Uh, the plant survive, survival strategy requires its seed to be harvested along with those of domesticated grass. You see, it can only function when it's in amongst healthy grass. You see, when you put sin, when you, when you go to the Lord and the Lord puts sin out of your life, sin has no rule over you. Sin always wants to be alongside. You ever heard the expression, misery loves company? Well, guess what? Those who are, 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 are miserable in their sin, they want to attach to you. What? Not so that they may become like you, but that so that they may try to persuade you to become like them. But believer in Jesus Christ, as we surrender our life to the Lord, as we stick to the word of God, then we will have something to say about them looking more like us. God has called us to be the head and not the tail. Uh, are these things starting to come into clarity as we go on? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the workers are instructed to not pull out the weed because it will destroy the grass. You know, uh, this shows that it will be a mixed kingdom. The kingdom of heaven will be a mixed kingdom, mixed with Good as well as evil, mixed with weed as well as wheat, mixed with righteousness along with sin. Until when? Until Christ returns. Until Christ returns. That's why he's giving. Remember, that is why he's giving his disciples and those who are around him. He's speaking in parables because uh, if you look up a little earlier in that chapter, you'll see that. Christ speaks in parables so that those who are with him would know what's going on. Those who are not with him would be totally lost about what he's talking about. And so uh, 
this mixed kingdom will continue. And that's what we're seeing now. But there's something I want to warn you about. Christ is not telling us this so that we may become the judge of others. Christ is revealing this to us so that we, who love the Lord, who have been saved by his grace, that we would surrender our lives to the Lord and follow his Holy Spirit. To me, this shows that we will not be able to legislate religious morality. Dweeds can only be dealt with by Christ. And so my encouragement is not to try to depend on the political system of this world to legislate religious morality. Do not depend on pastors or anyone else to regulate religious morality. That is to be done by Christ and Christ alone. So you might say, well, pastor, if we're not here to judge, what are we here to do? We're here to serve the Lord. We're here to grow in the Holy Spirit, in the power of his Holy Spirit, and to serve him. Hallelujah. Let me move on to the second point. The second point starts in verse 40. And verse 40 highlights my second point, which is that God has a plan to take care of this mixed community. Amen. When I say it's not our place to try to remove the weed, our place is to serve God as he tells us to. So that that weed would become wheat. But we're not to remove weed because remember, the more you attempt to judge others and to remove them, the more you can be affected as well. So at this point in time, uh, uh, at, at rather at the appointed time, which is called the harvest, the Son of Man will weed out his kingdom, everything that has caused sin and all who do evil. Amen. You see, once again, that's the role of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the judge, not us. Uh, they will be thrown into a blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In other words, there's going to be great suffering. Uh, and, and, and I know that in today's world, we do not preach about that part of hell. We do a whole lot of talk about heaven, and, and that's good. But we also must always remember, this kind of woke me up in my study, that, that hell is real. And hell is painful. And, and we need to look to the Lord, look to the Lord and, and depend on him to help us be saved and to live righteously. As I stated in last week's sermon, there will be a great many Christians that attend church. That's right, Christians that attend church, own a Bible, and do good works who will be thrown out with the weeds and not kept safe with the wheat. Now, who they are, I don't know. Because remember, Christ said that there will be many who come to him and say, I did good works, I saved, I healed, I did this, I did that, da da da, da da da. And Christ will say, Depart from me. I never knew you. You don't have the head, or you don't have the fruit that comes from the Holy Spirit. Christ will say, I never knew you. Now, like I said, this scared me. When I read this, I, this scared me because, uh, because I know that I do not have the strength or the ability to do everything that God has required. I don't. So I ask God. I ask God that, that famous question in the Bible, what must I do to be saved? What must I do? And, and, and the Holy Spirit responded, you must repent and seek God first. Amen. We have to repent and seek God first. That is the answer. That is the answer that God has uh, to show us how he is going to handle 
the sin in this world. We can rest assured. We can rest in peace. I know there's a lot of violence in the street. Right now, we're still dealing with COVID. Uh, we're dealing with the injustices. We're dealing with a political system that seems to be out of control. Uh, uh, our youth uh, uh, seem to be spiraling backwards because there's no leadership by the adults. Uh, all these things. With all this craziness, God still wants us to walk in peace knowing that he has a plan to answer. And so I'm, I'm just going to go through the second, the second parable. The second parable is just like the first. It's making the same points. The mustard seed represents the progress of the church. Now God is looking at the church more specifically about the church and not just the whole world. Uh, the progress of the church from small beginnings. You know, the mustard seed is small. Church started small. Jesus chose 12 disciples. Amen. Jesus chose 12 disciples. And the church started from small beginnings. And so the mustard seed speaks to the humble beginnings of the church. And once again, the Son of Man sows the seeds. And the field is his world. And the church is in the world. Right? We are in the world, but be not of the world, the Bible tells us. It also speaks uh, of Satan's continuous attacks upon the church. Now, if you're like me, you said, wait a minute, isn't the mustard seed a good parable? Well, after further study, it's a realistic parable of what's going to happen when Christ, who has already ascended into heaven, as we wait for his return. My study taught me that the mustard is a plant that although it grows, it only grows but so big. Have you ever asked yourself when it said the mustard seed grows into this big tree and then you go and research and the mustard seed is still a plant? It grows big, but it's still a plant. It's not a tree. So the emphasis here on the growth of the mustard seed, growth of that plant, the emphasis is on the growth of the seed in today's text reveals that it has grown beyond God's design, noting that God never intended that mustard seed to grow into a tree. The growth of this seed highlights the perversion of the church's methods of growth. The church will, some, some churches will do anything to get more members. The birds in this parable symbolize uh, evil getting into the church that is focused on its quantitative growth. The growth, it, the number of people, instead of on its qualitative growth, being the character and the quality of the people of God. The emphasis of the church needs to be on bringing people into a right relationship with Jesus Christ, not on how many people you have in your congregation. So notice the term birds here. These are birds of the air. That's what separates them. They're birds of the air. Just like who? Just like the prince of the air, which is Satan. The birds are sitting on the branches. Once again, speaks to the infiltration of evil into the church. You see, when we are so focused on numbers, Yes, we want to spread the gospel. We want to spread the gospel throughout the whole world. That has nothing to do with numbers. We want to go out and spread the gospel. Those who are saved are not our responsibility. Our responsibility is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to live the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Our, our job is not to record how many people we saved. Because we've never saved anybody if we're honest with ourselves. So uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about the church in Rome. 
going all the way back to Constantine. You know, Constantine, before Constantine, the church was persecuted. Constantine, a, a Roman leader, accepted Jesus Christ. And so therefore, the church was no longer persecuted. But this, and so it had a time of great growth. You know, that, that lack of persecution led to the church's growth in Rome as the church was no longer being persecuted. With the growth, we also began to see the corruption enter the church exponentially. The church stopped being God's church when it began perverting its doctrine and objectives beyond God's intended limits. When the church started doing what they wanted to do, today we see a church that changes. We see churches that are changing from God's doctrine and following the doctrine of the world because they're afraid they may offend somebody. Now I'm not telling you to judge anyone. But we speak the gospel message of Jesus Christ as told in the word of God. You have people today, even in seminaries, some seminaries will say that the word of God is a man-made doctrine. No, it's not a man-made book. This gospel, uh, this Bible of Jesus Christ is a Bible that's inspired by the Holy Spirit. It is the word of God spoken. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you don't believe that, you need to go back and speak with God. You see, so the church stops being God's church when it perverts its doctrines and objects and, and objectives beyond God's intended limit. But once again, we need not worry. We need not worry because God will deal with this infiltration by replanting his church in another corner of the field. So, so when we're talking about uh, uh, the, 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 the tree that comes from this mustard seed, what God is saying that that church grew beyond his intended expectations. Why? Because it began to, uh, uh, it began to pervert doctrines to meet the cultural desires and the cultural ones, instead of setting up a culture that is based on the word of God, that's based on God's kingdom. Now, when we talk about the kingdom of God, and, and you talk about any kingdom, the king is the sole ruler. It's not like the presidency, you don't go. It's not like the prime minister in England, you don't go and vote for a king. You, you, you have no say. The subjects who live in that kingdom have absolutely no say of who the king is. The, the uh, subjects that live in that, live in that kingdom do solely what the king instructs. And everything that is in that kingdom belongs to the king. Everything. And so, God will deal with this in infiltration by replanting his church in another corner of the field. You want to be in that church. You want to be in that church. It may not have as many members as the other churches, but you want to be in that church because that is the church where they are following the word of God. So, you might be saying by now, Pastor, what are we going to do? <laughs> what are we going to do? Because this is not a pretty picture. And, and, and you would be correct. It's not a pretty picture. What must we do to ensure we are a part of God's solution? That's what I'm asking God. Because I'm not taking it for granted that I am uh, uh, going to be, when, when that separation comes, that I'm going to be brought in the barn because I don't have the ability nor the strength to do what God has asked. So John 16, 13 says, God is calling us to seek God first. That's what he wants us to do. That's not the only thing we do, but that is the first thing we do. That is the priority. The priority is to seek God first. Make him first. And everything else, seek Ye, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
and everything else you have need of shall come to pass. First Timothy six says, uh, uh, tells us to walk in the Holy Spirit who will guide you to all truths. Amen. Who will guide you to all truths. He will not because he does not speak on his own. He will tell you what is yet to come. Because, you know, when that word of God was written, he inspired it. He was there. He was there because he's God. So he will be able to direct you and guide you into all truths. You know, because without the Holy Spirit, we can't we cannot deal with the mixed messages that are coming at us today. There are so many different messages. Many that people line up with the word of God. That we need the Holy Spirit to give us proper sight. We need the Holy Spirit to give us the strength to stand. And when the pressure is against us, when the world's pressure is against us, and everybody's coming after the church, we are going to need the power of the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that powered Jesus when he went into the desert to stand up against the wiles and the ways of Satan. Also, we need the Holy Spirit. We need to walk in the Holy Spirit because without the Holy Spirit, we cannot bring people into the church or into the body of Jesus Christ. We need the Holy Spirit to remove the scales as he did with Paul, to remove the scales and bring about the change. And I want to uh, I want to start wrapping it up with this, with Luke chapter 12, verses 31 and 32. Only follow, and which basically says, only follow the word, not religion. If you want people to know Jesus, pray for God to change them. You see, in the world today, and I've talked about it over the past couple of weeks, and I believe God has led me up to this place. The last couple of weeks, I've talked about the church needing to lead. I've talked about the problems that exist within the church. But now God has answered us and showed us why there are problems. There are always going to be problems in the church until the people of God stand by the power of the Holy Spirit and stand according to the word of God and no longer give in to the cares of this world. No longer try to please the world, but seek to please their king. The one who is the ruler of their kingdom. We are here, but we are not meant to be here. And so we are to understand that we are from the kingdom of God, where God is king. And we do that everything that we have is his. That everything that we do glorifies his name. That we are his subjects. And he is our king. Walk. By the power of the Holy Spirit, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and God will raise you up to be a strong, uh, uh, a strong stalk of wheat and not a weed. But you will have to deal with the weeds around you. But in the strength and by the power of his Holy Spirit, you will be able to do so because God's wheat Always stand strong, even amongst the weeds. May God bless you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, I want to ask you today to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Say the prayer, Father God, in Jesus' name, I surrender my life to you. I accept Jesus as my Lord, which is my head, which is my leader. I accept him as my Lord and my Savior. And I am ready to connect with your other children and study your word and learn more about you so that I may stand amongst the weeds in Jesus' name. God bless you. Know that he loves you, and so do we, by the power of his Holy Spirit. Have a blessed week. Amen. Morning into dancing, you have turned my soul.